We ask that you would guide us, Father. And Lord, I ask that you would bless me, Father. I ask that you would remove me out of self and hide me. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, These blessings I ask in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. First, giving honor to God. To Pastors Good, Bishop Osborne, Reverend Sears, yes, yes. Brother Borders, and all of the preaching brethren here, to all of the visitors and friends. It is indeed an honor to once again be found in the house of the Lord where prayers can be answered and God's mercy can be found. I want to invite your attention to two passages of Scripture. The first Scripture will be Isaiah, 40th chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. I'm sorry, or excuse me, I'm not sorry, but excuse me. That's Isaiah, the 40, 40th chapter, and the 31st verse. That is Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and the 31st verse. And the scripture reads, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And our next scripture is Hebrews 11th chapter and the first verse. That's Hebrews 11 and 1. All right. And it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, well, well. the evidence of things not seen. May God add a blessing to the reading right. and sharing yes. Yes. of his word. Yes. And with faith in mind, with faith in mind, mm -hmm. I'll use for a subject expecting a mighty move of God. All right, all right. Expecting a mighty move of God. Yes, yes. As I stand here before you tonight, I am just so grateful to look around and see such a beautiful edifice All right. that the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. Amen. This is the fruits of faith. Amen. Amen. And Brother Chris, it's good to see you tonight. When you came in, you took a seat right there. There was no doubt in your mind that that pew could hold you, that it was strong enough to hold you, but you sit there with faith yeah. that it would. All right. And I told Pastor Gooden earlier that it's rather warm in here. All right. Pastor Gooden took me back. He said, oh, I like it like that. And I looked at All him right. and I said, wait a minute. I have spent some time with the pastor Amen. that liked it real warm. So I told him, that's okay. I have a towel. All room. right. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, this faith, Pastor Houston used to explain faith as it's like hope. On his tippy toes. Oh, yeah. Right. And exercising this faith yeah. is like reaching up to God with an empty hand and not moving until God feels it. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. This faith is demonstrated all through the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Sarah, she doubted what Abraham.
Abraham was talking about. But with faith, faith. God blessed her to conceive. People called Noah crazy. Man, why are you going to build a boat in the middle of nowhere? But Noah had faith in what God had been telling him of what was to come. So with direction, Noah built this ark. This faith is the reason to keep moving forward, right. to keep pressing forward, right. and not doubting right. or looking back. Yes. Yes. You know, when we're driving our cars, I don't know if you've ever looked at it this way, but we have a rear view mirror in the car. Right. And this rear view mirror is to briefly reflect. Yeah. At where you've come from. Yeah, that's good. But not to lose focus mm. on where you're going. All right. And having this faith in God. The theme, the church's theme says, press toward the mark for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. And that theme, or the theme living free for God, this this. This faith gives you the reason and the drive to continue moving forward. Yeah. Now, as I go to my seat, I'll use a quick illustration of faith in God and how it works out. Well, well, God has blessed us to be in such a wonderful building. Amen. God has blessed us to be in such a wonderfully wholesome sanctuary. Amen. Now, in this life, we're going to be confronted with everything. Amen. Oh, it's going to be people want to kick you out of the pulpit. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Bishop Osborne, if people don't want you here, oh, you know, right. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if people want to be here with us. He still wears his hair in the curve. Well, and this life, but if you can imagine trying to bury a billy goat alive. I see how you're looking at me. Bury a billy goat in life. Well, but that billy goat, you're going to have hatred that's going to come at you. And if you can see that billy goat in the bottom of the pit, as you throw dirt on it, that billy goat shakes it off and packs it down. You're going to go to churches where they don't believe in your ministry because they say the youngsters, they're too loud. They don't know no better. But the Bible says make a joyful noise. Right. You're going to be confronted with these things. But you remember that billy goat? You yeah. throw dirt on it and you yeah. shake it off and yeah. pack it down. My wife and I just moved from Lakewood, but the oh, devil man. is a lie yeah. to be here and we're here. And the dope men are posted up a few as a few feet from the living room. The devil is a lie, but I understand that we need to go through some things to get to some things having faith. And with the same faith, if you can see a billy goat again, throw some more dirt on him, he's gonna shake it off and pack it down. And then having this faith. And moving forward in God, you look at that billy goat after a while, you threw all this dirt on him, and he just shook it off and packed it down, and then you say, well, this is not that. I thought we better get fell a long time ago. And the billy goat said, nah. But he's overcome all of this. And look at all that he's overcome and shook off, and the billy goat is back down, and now he's standing on top with faith in God. Having this faith in God gives us the desire Amen. to press forward yes. in anticipation of Christ coming back. Yes. But before Christ left, Christ came down through 42 generations. And if you can, if you can see Christ coming down and he was persecuted and he came to his own people, his people didn't want to receive him. His people didn't want to have nothing to do with him. And Bishop Osborne said about this, this uh, yard bird, I think he said. Yeah, this yard bird rooster. Christ told Peter, the rooster will cock three times. And you're going to be dying. Before Peter knew it, the rooster had crowed three times. But Christ came down through 42 generations. 
And they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They whipped him all night long. And they marched my Jesus up on a hill called Calvary. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. And somebody pierced him in his side. But there came forth a double flood. Water and blood. After Jesus had spent this time on the cross, dying from the sixth to the ninth hour, they took him down and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Jesus stayed there three days, but early, early, early Sunday morning, my Jesus got up with all power in his hand and said, Whosoever will, let him come and take up the waters of life for you. We have faith and we can keep moving forward. I thank you.